Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the session today. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this is the third of the brokerage sessions. My name is Caroline Wadsworth and I am from ILE Utilities. I'm here today representing the delivery partnership, which is made up of Nesta, Arab, Isle, and of course our partner Offwatts. Um, just before we get going, I'd just like to remind everybody that this session is being recorded and we will be making the recording available on both the website and we will be distributing it to the water companies and the NAVs within um, England and Wales. So before I go into any more detail at this point, I'd like to hand over to my colleague CMAB in Offwatt for a short introduction. Over to you CMAB, thank you. Thank you Caroline. Um... Thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, we are very excited to have opened up our first competition, the Innovation in Water Challenge. So it's open for entries. It opened um, on the 18th of January. Um, and it's good to see this sector active, actively explore new partnerships. I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone for attending and you know, for preparing all your presentations. It's, it's been great to see the level of interest and I really hope you enjoy the session today. Um, I'm conscious it's a quite a packed agenda, so I'm going to pass over to um, Caroline from IO, who has helped to organise these sessions and will be chairing the rest of the session today. Thank you. Super, that's that's great. Thank you, CMAB. Um, so as CMAB says, we, we have got a really packed agenda and I'll come to that in a second. But just as a reminder, um, we are sticking very strictly to the four minutes that's been allocated to everybody. Um, if you can all keep your cameras and mics off during the session until you're asked to turn them on in order for you to speak at the 30 second point. So when you've got 30 seconds left of your time, I will turn my camera back on as an indication that you need to start to wrap up. Um, if we can just move to the next slide, please. So hopefully you've all seen this, but this is an overview of the, um, the programme and the running order. Um, and we will go through it, obviously, as it shows, unless one of the presenters isn't online. Um, but yeah, it should be a very exciting session. I think there's lots of uh, really interesting solutions to be put forward. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so just to give you um, some background for those of you that may have missed some of the other more informative sessions giving the information. Um, as I've already mentioned, we are sticking very strictly to the two uh, to the four minute presentation slot, and I will give you that notice of turning my camera back on. Um, we are having some um, clarification questions, which will be the same for everybody in this case, because as you're all aware, we don't have a live audience today. Um, but hopefully those and um, the, the content of your presentation will provide enough information to, to encourage the water companies to make contact and to explore those partnership opportunities. Uh, next slide, please. So as uh, CMAB says, we're really excited that Offer has launched um, two uh, innovation competitions, um, which is all together made up a 200 million pound innovation fund. The first of which is the Innovation in Water Challenge, which as CMAB says was launched on the 18th of January. Um, the second is a, a larger fund, which um, more details will be released on this in spring 2020. That is the main competition. The fund that we're dealing with today has a pot of around 2 million. Um, and the aim of it is to help grow the capacity to innovate within the sector and to enable the sector as a whole to better meet the evolving needs of the customers, society and the environment. Next slide, please. So just some details um, and information on the process itself. As we've said, the, the first round of this process has opened. It isn't the only um, bite at the cherry. A second round will be opening later this year in, in around November. Uh, but for this particular round, there's a six week entry process. Um, the entry period closes on the 26th of February at 12 noon. We will then be convening a judging panel towards the end of March and all winners will be informed by early April. So it's a, it's a short turnaround timeline to enable people to get going as quickly as possible. Uh, next slide, please. So the key rule that's really pertinent for everybody on the line today is to make sure that you understand that the lead applicant entering into this process must be one of the water companies or now for the new entrants um, it, from within England and Wales with either yourselves or yourselves and others as partners in that mix. 
um, at this point, uh, the partner themselves can't enter uh, single-handedly. Uh, next slide, please. So um, I think that's enough from my side. Um, I would really, really, really pleased to have everybody here. So at this point, I'll ask um, Joe Ao, apologies if I've uh, said your name incorrectly there, um, but hand the stage over to yourself and you have four minutes um, to, to give us a quick run through and just please ask for the next slide when you're ready for the size to move on. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. In fact, is João, uh, so you said it well, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is João from Wakaru, and uh, I am very thankful for this opportunity to get to your attention and careful consideration the water-wise system. It's well produced leakage in England and Wales, but this is just a part of water-wise. Can we go to the next slide, please? Well, supported in artificial intelligence transforms data into knowledge, generating events and identifying the abnormal ones giving the water company an integrated vision of the urban water cycle from abstraction up to distribution and down to the treated water wasted usage, either reuse or delivering it to the environment. Next slide, please. With the WaterWise system, water companies will successfully overcome two of five off what challenges. One, Responding and adapting to climate change, including how to meet the sector's ambition of net zero emissions by monitoring energy consumptions and equipment's best operation, monitoring the whole urban water cycle. Uh, sorry, can we go to the previous one? Okay. And understanding long-term operational resilience and infrastructure risks to customers and the environment, finding solutions to mitigate these in sustainable and efficient ways. And how? Well, by monitoring the whole water urban cycle, identifying abnormal events with predictive models and reduce leakage, non-revenue water and extending assets lifetime. We could go to the next one now, please. But it's not a single solution as most of the competition of competitors, but the complete offering gives water companies a 360 degrees view of the whole urban water cycle. It has probably the broader scope of most innovative solutions for water networks management, addressing the water energy nexus. Potable water, wastewater, rainwater, flow, pressure, water quality, energy consumption, renewable energies, event-driven artificial intelligence, hybrid implementation, real-time inferences and predictions, better than a Hogwarts wizard. Let's go to the next one. Well, uh, the impact evaluation of water-wise system is monitoring continuously, reducing wastage, reducing leakage and non-revenue water. Next slide, please. Uh, nothing like some images better than thousand words. These are some screenshots from the WaterWise system. So you can get um, monitoring by a general analytical information on leakage, bursts, um, whatever the key performance indicator you have chosen to, to do it. Uh, you also get some operation analysis from the whole urban water cycle to the water supply system to the DMA. Uh, and you can compare different TMAs. Um, you get also the event analysis. This is the um, most common you can find in these kind of solutions. Either it is an abnormal consumption event, uh, um, abnormal energy consumption event, water quality event, burst event, leakage event, whatever. You get the water balance and uh, with the water balance also, uh, the KPI performance indicators. So this is very important when we are talking, as we've heard this morning by Anglin Water, with polyregulator sector as it is in England and Wales. And of course, as we are saying, uh, different differentiation, very important on this um, digital solution, the um, energy consumption. So the water energy nexus. Next slide, please. Well, we are TRL7, but we already got some recognitions from the Water Global Practice of World Bank, from the Portuguese Innovation Agency, and from the Portuguese Energy Agency. And we go to the last one to say thank you so much for your attention and your careful consideration. 
we hope to partnership with um, well water companies uh, in this innovation in water challenge in order to rapidly complete the roadmap we planned. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Thank you very much. And thank you for keeping to the, the four minutes. I know it's always hard to be the first one to go as well. Um, just as some, a quick follow up question from, from there. Um, can you explain a little bit about what you would like from a partnership with a water company or one of the NAVs and how this would benefit the development of the solution that you've proposed this morning, this afternoon, should I say, sorry. Well, um, thank you for the questions. Uh, as I said, uh, we are already in the, the TRL7 phase uh, and uh, being with a water company in the UK would be very important because um, I see that uh, the maturity level of most of the water companies who have been uh, uh, trying to contact these last uh, weeks is very high. So uh, we can in fact deliver most of all the potential that we have in the water wise system, not only of what is already done and ready to, to deliver, but also to help us to be more quickly uh, on answering to the, the world roadmap. Okay, so uh, we more than uh, funding to do things, we want to work with the water company. We want to do this on a real time, on the real field uh, where the problems are and where we believe we got the solutions. That was great. A very good explanation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Caroline. Okay, we will we'll, um, pass on to the next presenter, who is Chris from KikaPay. Are you there, Chris? I'm mute. There we go. Lovely. I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much for inviting KickPay to present uh, to today's event. Yeah, my name is Chris Moore and I'm the CEO and founder of KickPay. Uh, KickPay is a new company focused on providing products and services that are based on open banking. Open banking is designed to benefit companies such as utilities like water companies and particularly their customers. Kicker is our payment product. It is faster, more convenient, and more, more secure for collecting uh, payments than a card payment. It is also generally 70% cheaper too for the utility company. Kicker enables utility companies to request payments from their customers by virtually any mechanism, such as a QR code on a statement, a link in a text message or email, or a payment option on a checkout page or a website or mobile app. We're currently implementing this for a water company and other clients outside of utilities as well. As well as being innovative and probably the simplest way to make a payment, a kicker payment flow for the customer provides an opportunity for the utility company to engage in a dialogue with the customer, even as something as simple as showing some water saving tips or a link to information about how to save water. It is this aspect that made us realize that Kicker could be used by a customer to request help with their bill. Moreover, using other aspects of open banking, i.e. Share, the sharing of a customer's financial information, there's an opportunity for utility companies to identify early and help vulnerable customers pay their bills. Could we move to the next slide? So what is Help to Pay and our idea for a grant application? The genesis of Help to Pay is the realization that open banking can give a utility company access to new data source, i.e. the customer's banking and transaction data. Combining this with other sources and using algorithms, um, uh, we can determine what is affordable for the customer and the best schedule of payments to pay their bill that best fits that customer's earning profile. On this page, I set out the basic concepts of the product. We envisage a customer will ask to initiate a dialogue, which where they ask for help. 
we could offer to work out what they could afford and what support they could get by analyzing their banking transactions, water usage information, and potentially other data sources. We need to get explicit consent from the customer to do this. By applying different algorithms and machine learning to improve the accuracy over time, we can offer a tailored support package to the customer. There are so many things that we could do with this data and our solution, and that's why we're looking for help from water companies, regulators, consumer organizations, and relevant charities to help determine the, sh the shape of help to pay. We will be seeking an off-what innovation grant to help fund the product development. We are already working with Manchester University on the machine learning aspects of help to pay Help to pay is in line with the innovation grant theme of making use of open data and with Offwatt's PR determination to identify and help more vulnerable customers. We're inviting all interested parties to take part in an open work, open online workshop on Monday the 4th and Monday the 1st of March at 4 p.m. We already have several confirmed participants, so please contact me or my colleague Tim. Um, soon if you would like to take part or find out more about help to pay uh, can you just go to the final slide for contact details thank you very much that was great thank you very much chris very another very interesting presentation um you did cover this um uh, partially in your presentation there already uh, but can you just expand on a little bit what you would like from a partnership with a water company or a nav and how that would benefit you in uh, the development of this solution Yes, I think that that we all we we know that many water companies have already explored some elements of how to help vulnerable customers in terms of the help not only to pay their bill but also help um, in terms of reducing their bill. So um, we want to find out how open banking and open data can help facilitate that process. We also want to make sure that we are addressing a, a, a challenge, a big challenge that, that both the utility, the water company and their customers face that we can solve with open, open banking and open banking data. Um, and we also want to make sure that we don't build something that's you know, already been resolved. That's super. Thank you very much. Very clear explanation. Um, OK, we'll move on to the next presenter, who is Bruno from Scubic. Hi everyone. Hi Bruno, that's yeah. great. Thank you, yeah, over thank to you. you. Thank you Caroline. Uh, so good afternoon to everyone. My name is Bruno Abreu. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Scubic. And first of all, thanks for this opportunity to present uh, our work to, to the UK water utilities. As everybody one knows, most water utilities in the UK and in many countries in Europe has already installed some level of IoT or sensors to manage their water networks. However, as the number of devices increase, creating valuable insights and optimizing the network operation uh, has proven to be a very complex problem to solve. Therefore, we need a solution that can use the IoT data and automatically deliverable powerful insights without the needs for any human interactions. And this is why we create Scubic. Next slide, please. Scubic develops detailed smart digital twins, or how I call it, a virtual operator, which use a wide range of data sets, both from the network and from external sources, such as weather, demographics, and economics data. Then the machine learning algorithms use this data to predict the, in real time the water and energy demands across different parts of the network, uh, the software also uses information on energy supplies and electricity price and some level of the operator knowledge to optimize the energy cost of pumps and valves, all of this on real time. Either the pumps can be automatically controlled by our solution or the closed based software can provide information to the network operators, enable them to control the system more efficiently. With these solutions, we are helping the water utilities on the long-term operational resilience and reduce the network risk 
has described on the innovation team number three. Next slide. So Scubic helps water utilities to achieve their zero carbon goals, reduce the water and energy wastage, and helps reducing the loss of knowledge due to some aging workforce that is helping, uh, that is uh, happening all over uh, water utilities in Europe. With Scubic, we will increase the water quality and network security. And since we lower the energy costs and emissions, our platform has a vast fast uh, return on investment. Next slide, please. So we have applied Scubic on small municipalities but we are reaching reductions up to 18% on their energy costs, which was, is really amazing. But I have one thing that I have to stress out. Scubic, it's not an IoT or a network management system. Scubic augments these systems and, manually, uh, and many manual process that can be replaced with the fully autonomous modules. For the near future, we will scale up a scubic solution for larger what uh, for larger water networks and to demonstrate the autonomous modules working therefore we are looking for water companies that can give us access to the data and apply this unique system at a large scale networks final slide please so thank you very much for for your attention and i hope to optimize your network operation very very soon thank you that was super. That was Thank super. you very much. Thank Rita. you very much. Um, kept the time perfectly as well. Um, I, I, again, you touched on this in your slides already, but just for the purposes of clarity, um, could you just describe or explain what you would like from a partnership with a water company or a NAV in the UK or in England and Wales and how this would benefit the solution development? Uh, okay, well, we, we, we are uh, mostly a data analytics company with knowledge on hydraulics and on energy efficiency. So we only need uh, access to some uh, network data uh, and, and, of course, uh, talk with the operators to get part of their knowledge in our systems. Uh, that's what uh, we really need from the water utilities. After that, we need some uh, water network or part of the water network where we can test it our solution on the, our cloud-based platform. But what we really want is the fully autonomous systems working. We, we will replace part of the, the work that the operators have on the daily basis and some manual, uh, the manual steps that they have to do to, to manage their water networks. This is what we really need from uh, water utility. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you for the explanation there. That's very useful. Um, okay. So next on the agenda, we have John from... Sorry, I've been muted. Uh, apologies for that, John. Uh, I was handing over to that to you there um, and just saying how you were already ready uh, and good to go. So I'll hand over to you at this point. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon to everyone from Denver, Colorado. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, very quickly, uh, Pluto Shift uh, has been in business uh, since uh, early 2018, really focused on bringing uh, practical artificial intelligence to uh, what we consider the uh, industrial world. Uh, our founder uh, and CEO, Pratik, is one of the leaders in the world on the topic of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, we have offices uh, uh, here in the States, Palo Alto, Denver, Louisville, Kentucky, a presence in Latin America and the UK. And uh, we're really committed to bringing sustained results and benefits uh, to our clients and customers uh, with, with hard ROIs and real benefits to their organizations. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, relative to our grounded AI methodology and platform, uh, for us, it's really about uh, bringing and empowering uh, within uh, a utility, uh, the frontline and remote workers. How do we bring the insights in an actionable way where they can really bring value to their uh, infrastructure? So our approach is very practical. Uh, it's driven by data. Uh, we enhance and empower uh, the organization and really lock in on the key pain points to improve uh, how a facility 
uh, functions and operates. Next slide, please. Uh, relative to how we can make contributions, <clears throat> it's really in the areas of better data analysis, uh, optimized resources, optimized systems, and with our platform and approach, we bring immediate day-to-day -day value to an organization. Uh, we don't try to boil the ocean per se and really understand the functional uh, aspects of what it takes to operate differently. Uh, within that, we really feel we help drive positive behavior change within an operation to make sure that it actually uh, progresses and achieves its goals. Next slide, please. Uh, when we look at what we do, it's really about the opportunities that are put forth through this uh, uh, organization on really how we can help the water utilities make more out of what they do across the various assets and processes. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we do uh, have uh, demonstrated results where everything we do is backed by a, a defined ROI. And within these uh, sample case studies, you know, where we're driving impacts, uh, that would be a great benefit to a water utility. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, also, I think we're getting a lot of visibility due to our thought leadership uh, on the topic of grounded AI and how to implement it. Next slide, please. Uh, a little bit more about our market recognition. And then last slide, please. Really, you know, what we're seeking from a partner is, you know, how to holistically assess its business processes. You know, we could really help analyze and optimize uh, existing uh, data investments, uh, improve uh, performance and regulatory compliance, uh, achieve cost and resource efficiencies, and then enhance performance of frontline and remote workers. Uh, within what we need is uh, access to uh, a water utility uh, from the perspective of gaining their data. And then through gaining their data, we're able to come back and provide exact areas that our platform can be of value to them. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for the time. That was great, John. Thank you very much. Um, and perfect timing again there. So everybody's doing extremely well. Um, you have already answered the first half of the question that I've asked um, the other participants today. I think the area that you could perhaps uh, add a little bit more detail to is if, if you are able to gain a successful partnership with one of the English or Welsh water companies or NAVs, how would this benefit the development of this solution in particular? Will it help you accelerate the development, accelerate the market entry? What are the specific things that you're hoping to achieve? I think, we, I think there are two. Obviously, there's a market presence uh, and establishing uh, more of a foothold uh, in that market area. Also, I think as we are working across the globe, uh, gaining access to uh, data within a different environment, uh, coming off a different set of processes and systems, uh, will only make our platform and our algorithms richer. That's great. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, I, I will now hand over to Glyn Owen from Systems Coaching. Are you there, Glyn? Hello, Caroline, can you hear me? Hi, Glyn, we can hear you. We can't see you at the moment, but we can hear you. Okay, let me just see. Perfect. You're on camera now. That's perfect. Okay, is, thank yes, you. Yes, yes. So the floor is yours. I'll turn my camera off and I'll turn it back on at 30 seconds to go. That's lovely. Well, thank you, Caroline. Well, thank you for the opportunity to present. My name is Glenn Owen and I am the creator of Systems Coaching. So Systems Coaching is an innovative approach that originated within the water sector during AMP2 and has subsequently been developed and prototyped over 20 years. The approach speaks to the transformation of matrix organizations, typically found in utilities, engineering, project and program, asset management, and also the supply chains. The purpose of systems coaching is to enable these organizations and whole systems to better innovate, cope, and perform during times of change and uncertainty. So what is systems coaching and how might it be applied? Next slide, please. 
As the name suggests, systems coaching is underpinned by systems thinking and is concerned with the organization dynamics between projects, programs, and portfolios, treating the system as one single whole entity. So in the world of business, coaching has gained traction over the past two decades. Presently at the emerging edge is a category called whole systems coaching. Systems coaching can be designed into an organization as a function to enhance performance. In a similar manner, if a car acquires more power or speed, a turbocharged system can be, in, can be installed. Additionally, systems coaching can be configured in to enhance a variety of organizational aspects related to change, development, and strategic value. As a function, it can be positioned in a PMO, center of excellence, enterprise department, or even as a whole system network. Next slide, please. So systems coaching developed over four stages, each lasting about five years. Notably in stage two, an early prototype achieved finalists at the UK National Business Awards in 2004. It operated within a top 10 contractor within, with AMP three and four strategic programs with many water companies. Stage three was outside the sector, focused on whole system transformation. Stage four was concerned with a national water company in the Middle East undergoing rapid transformation. And also, an award-winning regional integration pilot in the UK public sector. Finally, a book has just been published in December, capturing the blueprint of the approach. So here's the thing. Matrix organizations are typically designed and best perform in a stable, predictable delivery environment, such as the AMP period of five years. However, they typically struggle with change and innovation. And when the environment becomes unstable, the organizational risks intensify considerably. Next slide, please. So now in a post-COVID environment, as some agencies such as the World Economic Forum are urgently calling for a great economic and social reset, the volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity of the strategic operating environment is about to intensify. Rapid strategic and systemic pivoting may be the new normal. As an example, perhaps even questioning the viability and priorities of the AMP planning and delivery five-year programme periods. These sort of issues fall into an enterprise or strategic risk management category that are by nature often difficult to spot and treat. This is because of the people, process, organisation and culture attributes relating to how we perceive and engage with problems and solutions. Coaching, and in particular systems coaching, speaks to the dynamics and essence of these types of risks. Uh, last slide, please. So in summary, systems coaching may be considered as an upgrade for matrix organizations. Organizations that sit at the very foundation or core of a water or engineering based company together with the supply chains. My aspiration is to share knowledge, solutions and insights as quick, as wide and with as much impact as possible. I'd be delighted to collaborate with a water company or group of companies interested in leading a scale with impact strategy on behalf of the sector. So thank you for your attention and if you'd like to um, further information you can contact me through my website. That was great, thank you very much Glenn. Um, a, a quite a different solution that's being put forward so it's, it's very interesting to see um, and it, I enjoyed the reference to the post-Covid environment. Um, I think we're all looking forward to, to reaching that point. Um, as with the other um, partners pitching today, just like to ask you what you would like from a partnership with a water company or a NAV in England and Wales, and how this would benefit the solution development from your perspective. Okay, so thank you, Caroline. I'm just noting that the um, the slide is actually a bit um, distorted because of the um, uh, probably the presentation settings. So um, I will. Um, it's sort of the, the, the lack of clarity. So I'd just like to, to draw that. Uh, well, my aspiration is basically to share the knowledge, insight solutions, and continue, continue to develop the approach. Also to create new blueprint solutions. And this is what I'm actually good at. In a commercial environment, such as a management consultancy, this approach would probably be productized and serviced as a, and protected for, uh, for competitive advantage. Through a non-for-profit centre of excellence type solution, the knowledge can be shared and leveraged across the sector at speed and scale. So 
what I'm looking for is a, a partnership basically to help me connect with the community, um, communicate and, um, and, and leverage the solution and the opportunities and benefits actually out as, as wide as possible. Super. That's great. Thank you very much for that additional explanation. Um, I think we will now move on to, we have Sean Lowe from Fracta next. Thank you very much, Glenn. Hello. Hi, Sean. We can hear you, but we can't see you at the moment. Um, I tried to open my video, but okay. Oh, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> Thank Lovely. you. I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. So, so thank you, David, and thank you for the opportunity. So hello, I'm Sean Lo with Fracta. And Fracta is an AI startup that ap apply latest machine learning techniques to provide the most advanced data insight available for what they work. Today, I'm going to introduce Fracta and share two proposal with you. First, next please. Um, Fracta provides specific recommendations on how the network can be more resilient and more optimized, such as maximize the lifespan of assets. As you can see on the right side of the slide, Fracta analyzes every single pipe section and virtualizes the risk level. Now, we have released our platform in the US, Japan, with more than 90 utilities, to name a few San Francisco water, Suez, North America, Japan's Toyota City which is the hometown of Toyota Motors. And also we have analyzed more than 300,000 kilometers pipeline and hundreds of thousands of bursts. Next, please. Furthermore, our sophisticated data science team knows how to leverage AI across industry, such as wastewater, city gas, and railway. Next, please. So here is the main part of my pitch today. The con concept of our proposal is like Fracta current platform. You can see in the middle of this slide, focus on the coming half year to five years. We notice that climate change becomes an important issue for long-term asset management. So we came up with the proposal one to push our prediction to longer term, like 10 year plus with climate change element on the right side. And on the left side, you can see the proposal two. Leakage is an important issue in the UK. Fracta wants to find a partner to shorten the prediction to monthly, weekly, or even hourly to make leak detection more efficient. Both proposals need your valuable knowledge and data to polish the idea and make the thing come true together. Next, please. So let's share some details. For the first proposal, focus on climate change and asset resilience by analyzing and delivering insights from the data, which we believe including strategic innovation themes, number one, three, and five. So please check the right upper index on, the, on this slide. So this proposal plans to include IPCC climate change model to, to predict first, how the weather change will influence the useful life and risk factor for your pipe asset. Second, how to constantly import impact of climate change on your capital investment plan. So this proposal will benefit your long-term capital investment planning and make you more proactive on climate change. Next, please. On the other hand, we know the most common way to find a leakage in the UK is monitoring each DMA's inflow and outflow, and then send an acoustic solution team to find the exact location. So it's, it's usually tech times. The second proposal aims to deliver a better granularity of information as to how many births are expected to occur, and potentially a better estimate of which area section will experience more births by adding data like seasonality or life graders. So we hope much such uh, information will help benefit plan, op oper sorry, will help plan operations for upcoming weeks and season, with benefits such as better crew management and faster responsible time. So this is just two examples of our many proposal. So reach us for more op options and details. Next, please. So come partner with Fracta. Thank you very much. 
That was great. Thank you very much, Sean. Again, uh, another fantastic um, performance, keeping to time perfectly. Um, as with Thank the you. others, again, ask the question of what you would like from a partnership. Again, you did touch on this, um, but if you could expand on that and how this would benefit the solution development from your perspective, please. Thank you. So as our current platform are fully commercialized globally, so we are aiming to partner with the utility to create new challenging proposal, which is related to pipe infrastructure. So I think we need like mainly three steps. The first would be we have main, many ideas for drinking water pipe assets, but we don't know exact needs and topic which could benefit UK water market most to create the right proposal. So we are looking forward to discussing with UK water utility to understand the specific needs and topic. And the second step, we need the UK utilities knowledge and additional data to publish our proposal to become a more UK social issue oriented proposal to apply for the fund together. And finally, we would like to work with the utility to perform such an experiment at their service area. For example, use our um, analytic output to, 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 to check the exact leak location and to make the model much better. So as the first step, um, welcome any feedback on today's pitch and please send your specific and technical question directly to my email and we will reply to you shortly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for time. Super, thank you very much, Sean. Um, we will now move on to um, Chuck Hansen from ElectroScan. I can see Chuck has moved up the uh, screen, so I'll hand over to you. That's great. We can see you and hear you if you're ready to go. Okay, good. We're all set. Hey, thanks, no and good afternoon from California. Uh, I'm Chuck Hansen. I'm the owner of uh, Electroscan, and I'm delighted to uh, be with you here today and really, really talk about the worst kept secret in the trenchless technology industry. Next slide. And, uh, next slide. and that is, unfortunately, cured in place pipe one of the major trenchless pipes that have been used for almost 50 years in the UK, leak. Here's an example of a British liner. And you see that purple dye going directly through the liner. Unfortunately, uh, next slide, there's been no technology ever available to measure a full length liner. And the information actually gets worse. Not only are we finding pipes that are being lined with cured in place pipe leaking, we actually may leak more after rehabilitation because of how we're reconnecting services. Uh, next slide. The examples are all over and lining contractors really have known this for a long time, but we've given them a very easy technology bar. We've only used CCTV inspection. Here's a pipe that you can actually see that if I put this through the example as well, I would have full leaks through it. CCTV won't find it, next slide. Uh, acoustics won't hear it. And even helium tracers won't find it as well. Here's an example of a UV cured CAPP having cracks that a TV camera or an AI routine looking frame by frame would never see the permeability. Next slide. The other problem is not only has this been used in the sewer business, we are now finding examples in the UK water market where CIPP is being used to line water pipes. And not only do they look bad, but we're finding massive leakage. Next slide. It's the perfect storm because when we assume that we fix a pipe, we assume we're going to not have the infiltration, not have the backups, not have the flooding in homes in recently lined uh, areas in the UK. Next slide. So do we, what are we proposing? At the 250,000 pound mark, we're proposing to, to examine 25 kilometers of CAPP 
actually having that information organized by supplier, by curing method, comparing it to the original CCTV that approved this pipe before. We wanna also look at the flood risk where we're aligning pipes, assuming that we had a 100% reduction in pipe, and we wanna help come up with new acceptance standards. Next slide. Some of you may know, we, we recently won the November Water Dragons event. You see some of the water utilities uh, that were judges. Next slide. Uh, earlier this month, we also were selected as the leak detection solution of the year. Again, not acoustic, not video, and not uh, uh, tracing that. Next slide. So again, helping uh, agencies know good CAPP versus bad, we brought a new technology. Next slide. And we've been tested by the leading CAPP experts to come and help with that. Next slide. So this is the ability to hear. We don't use that. We don't use pressure. Next slide. What we do instead with our innovative technology for the first time ever. Next slide is we're able to measure the size of holes in pipes. Next slide. And the innovative thing is within five to 10 minutes, get that data delivered to the utility so they know exactly where the leak is positioned to one centimeter accuracy. Final slide. So I look forward to talking with you and uh, answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much, Chuck. Another very interesting presentation and a, a few familiar faces on some of those slides, including my own. So um, <laughs> nice, nice to see. Um, as with the others, just to ask the clarification question of what you would like from a partnership with a, a water company or a NAV in England or Wales and how this would benefit the solution development from your perspective. Yeah, you know, we're look, this is an industry where we're spending a billion dollars a year in rehabbing our pipes. And I'm sure all of the folks from Offwat are assuming once we repair a pipe, it doesn't leak anymore. That's simply not the case. And what we've been uh, holding really uh, contractors to has been older technologies like CCTV and even AI that can't identify permeability and leaks in pipes. And so we really want to make sure that, that uh, British water companies are getting value for money and really have the first major uh, CIPP evaluation for uh, a leading British water company. So that's what we like to offer. We'd sure like to, to uh, uh, select a good partner for that. Super, thank you very much. Okay, um, next up is Steve Thorpe from um, a collaboration between Atkins, British Geological Survey and Morgan Sindel. Hello. Can you see Hi, me okay? Steve. Yeah, we can see and hear you fine. So over to you. Great. Thanks very much. So my name is Steve Thorpe. Um, I work for the British Geological Survey. And uh, today I'm also representing our partners in Atkins and Morgan Sindel. And this is our solution entitled Dig to Share. Next slide, please. Um, unforeseen ground conditions are quoted as a cause for one in every two projects that overrun in time or costs. Naturally, geology is an unknown, but there are plenty of ways that we can bring geology to life to provide better predictions of what's beneath our feet. The BGS has a national repository of borehole data, which is often used to provide that geological understanding. But we estimate that around 80% of boreholes drilled in the UK are not sent to the BGS for storage. They sit in various organisations archives as either paper copies or as digital, for, uh, digital files, and therefore are regarded as single use. BGS has strong strategic alliance to the government's open data approach and believes that sharing data can help to reduce the risks and produce a more targeted ground investigation. Next slide, please. Uh, this is where dig to share hopes to help unlock all that data to make geology better understood and get the information to the people that need it. dig to share aims to help create a fully digital workflow from data creation, storage and retrieval. Dig to share understands many barriers to sharing your data and aims to identify what those are in the water sector and find solutions to those barriers. 
Uh, BGS would like data to be donated as open data and in industry standard formats as well. Uh, so that's AGS format. This allows retrieval of data to be much easier through um, things like web viewers, industry software like Holbase or Grand or Desktop, or in fact, through any GIS system. Um, as I've already mentioned, this will help to reduce risks and costs and help to design a more targeted ground investigation. Next slide, please. Uh, the Dig to Share project can help by identifying any blockers and providing solutions for you. We can help look at your um, current data management processes and see if there's any improvements to your data gathering routines and how you manage that data. The biggest, ben biggest benefit is that we can help you understand the value of ground investigation and the value of sharing data openly and how that benefits the UK economy as a whole. We would hope to establish a data sharing agreement at the bare minimum. These um, exist for many publicly funded infrastructure organisations already, such as the Environment Agency, Highways England, Network Rail, and recently the Welsh Government. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this slide just shows some of the achievement, achievements that we've had so far. Initially, the Dig to Share project was set up in 2018 as a one year project to release 10,000 boreholes, which we smashed. Um, we have set up a super user community to spread news of our efforts and empower people to encourage data sharing within their own organisations. And we've also been nominated for several awards and have in fact one of you. Um, we take part in conferences and look forward to, to doing that again actually once we're, once we're all set free. Um, the latest project is a citizen science initiative called the, the Big Borehole Dig. And this is led by the Dig to Share team, aiming to get the legacy PDF records held by BGS digitised into AGS format so that yet more data is available openly to everyone. Uh, next slide, please. So our, pro our proposal includes getting more data shared, giving the water sector access to the data sets to produce faster desk studies, to understand the geology around the assets in order that priorities can be set and planning for maintenance can be better forecast. By submitting your data to BGS, you are creating a richer data layer for UK, UK PLC, which can only improve if everyone plays their part and contributes to the national repository. Um, final slide, please. So thank you very much for the opportunity to present our ideas. I've been Steve Thorpe, and this is The Way Forward. This is Dig to Share. That's really super. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, another very interesting presentation. And as with the others, I'd just like to ask the clarification question of what you would like from the partnership or a partnership with a water company or NAV in England and Wales and how this would benefit you and the solution development. Sure. So um, this is all about data and kind of understanding the ground. Um, so essentially, we would like to learn more about the data held by water companies and the kind of data management process. So we would look to be um, having kind of open and frank conversations about what data might be available inside um, either one water company or a series of water companies um, and how we might kind of work together and make sure that um, more data enters the sort of national repository and, and is shared more widely. Um, we would um, we'd also like to investigate digitization of legacy data um, so that we can release all that data to the, um, to the rest of the world. And um, um, yeah, the, the, the bigger pool of data that goes in, the bigger the pool of, of data that is available to the next generation of infrastructure projects. Uh, that was really good. Thank you very much for the additional explanation there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we will now move on to Eddie from Knee House. Um, I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Uh, yes, yes, Eddie from uh, Nye House, indeed. Nye House, nearly, <laughs> nearly. <laughs> Good as it gets, it's perfect. <laughs> thank you. Super. I, I will hand over to you then. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I see the slide is a little bit different than I made, but uh, yeah, I'm going to talk uh, a bit about uh, the removal of pharmaceuticals in the wastewater to improve the ecology. I think it's a widely uh, known uh, topic. And that there's a negative impact from antibiotics, but also from all kinds of medicines and pharmaceuticals in the, in the wastewater. So if you can go to the next slide, please. So what we see in the general in the Netherlands, for example, is that the, the more uh, strict the, the regulations get, the more innovation is required, the higher the ambitions are of water companies. It requires more, more technology, more innovations. And at some point, it's uh, fairly impossible to retain all that uh, knowledge within the water company itself. 
So what we see is a more close uh, collaboration between the, 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 the technology providers and the water companies, where we actually strive towards innovation, innovative partnerships or uh, looking at, at a few cycles, not only to place the system there and to see if it works well, but uh, to, to share the, uh, the data, to think about it, to innovate, uh, use R&D, new technologies and, and keep on uh, having an up-to-date installation and technology. And of course, operation maintenance and, and, and monitoring is a very important part of it. Uh, next slide, please. So if we look up some technologies specifically for pharmaceutical removal, uh, there's much more I can talk about for hours about this, but ozone is one of the most widely applied uh, technologies here because it has a very uh, large uh, wide variation of, of pharmaceutical removal. Uh, it can remove up to 80%, 85% of the load. You can adjust the, uh, the dosing control in order to optimize the operational costs and you don't add chemicals in this case. And it also leaves some more opportunities for reuse of water, for example, irrigation water. Uh, there are some options to, to increase uh, the quality, for example, for recreation water, where you add additional disinfection by UV or peroxide or to prevent specific compounds uh, to uh, emerge in the water, like uh, at high bromide concentrations, bromate can be formed. Uh, or in combination with new or already existing sand filtration to uh, add combined uh, nutrient removal. Eh? For example, ozone uh, leaves uh, uh, oxygen in the water, uh, which already provides a lot of oxygen for nitrification in, 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 in sand filtration. Going to much higher qualities, nanofiltration is widely used already in the industrial uh, sector. Uh, but in, in the municipal uh, sector, it's more a demonstration stage. More and more plans and pilots are being done in the Netherlands currently. Uh, and and uh, to aim to look for, for higher quality of reuse, such as process water. Well, in the end, uh, we, uh, we end up with a higher quality of effluent. It enables more, more reuse opportunities. And if you only apply ozone, you already see uh, that the ecotoxicity toxicity is already reduced by 50% on the short term. Next slide, please. Well, to support all this, and also one of the things we can uh, contribute to the water companies is that we have extensive knowledge. We have uh, already five years of active knowledge uh, from pilots done by, uh, in the Netherlands, but also uh, countries around it, uh, together with, with a lot of companies and water companies in, in the Netherlands. So there's a huge amount of data sets on a very large variety of, of pharmaceutical compounds and different process setups. We already have pilots available and it's something uh, we know how this process has been performed in the Netherlands. And although the UK is different, of course, it doesn't mean you have to reinvent the wheel on every aspect. Uh, so this is what we can provide. And also the, uh, across, uh, the knowledge for, across different sectors like pharmaceutical or hospitals. Uh, next slide, please. I'm com going towards the end. It is all result in, 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 the, in the first full-scale ozone plant on, on municipal wastewater treatments. Uh, it will be built at the end of this year. It's for 85,000 PE. And we also look for more improvements. Uh, this is already, a, a, ozone is a concept that is already applied in Switzerland and Germany for a decade ago, but mostly based also on the knowledge from drinking water uh, applications. And uh, in the decade, uh, innovations have evolved. So we are talking about a more newer generation uh, with more online real-time dosing, um, for example, and more modular builds. Uh, please, the next slide. That's the final one. And if we look at modular builds, it, it, it has also a lot of benefits. For one, you can build it in the factory. So it reduces a lot of uh, people on site, uh, temporary uh, fa facilities on site, building time uh, reduced and cost, of course. And for example, in this case, at the pharmaceutical company, we only build this whole installation in six months uh, because the civil works and mechanical works almost could start simultaneously. Um, yeah, I think that that's about the time I had, uh, <laughs> correct? It is, yes, thank you very much. Um, yeah. Another really good presentation, thank you very much. Um, and as with everybody else, could you just expand a little bit, please, on what you would like from a partnership with a water company in England or Wales or with a NAV and how this would benefit the development of the solution you've proposed today? Yeah, we see, uh, especially in the Netherlands, uh, uh, 
this 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 is a development that has been running for some time in the UK. You have more specific demands, or you have a different infrastructure. There's always nuances. Uh, so yeah, what we could do is uh, we have a large variety of technology and the knowledge to look together with the water company in their situation, because it's not a one size fits all in this market, uh, to look at, at, at the best solutions. And we can support that with, uh, uh, with already available uh, pilots and, and, and yeah, uh, build on that. Super. Okay. That's great. Thank you very much, Eddie. All right, my pleasure. <laughs> okay, now next we will move to Jose from Bunt Planet. Again, I hope I've pronounced your name correctly there. Apologies if not. Are you there, Jose? Yes, can you hear me now? Uh, we can, it's very quiet, but we can just hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Now, yes, okay, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you just about, it's, it is quiet, so if you could speak up, that would be great. Um, uh, I'll hand over to you. Okay, thank you, Caroline. So I'm Jose Teixeira, Key Account Manager at Moon Planet. I'm gonna speak uh, about uh, hydraulic modeling and artificial intelligence in the small water network for water losses. Next page, please. So we are uh, innovating for the water sector since 2007 and liberated smart water projects worldwide. We are working now in 12 countries and the key goal here is the operational resilience and the infrastructure risks. So we think we have uh, this boom brain platform that is able to detect and prelocate leaks in the potable water supply pipes. And next, next slide, please. So what we do is we combine different technologies. Uh, that's where the real magic happens. So if you use the different technologies separated, yes, you can extract some value from them. But if you mix them, that's where you can really extract values. So we use hydraulic model in the first place uh, to build this digital twin. And we use all the information about uh, all the sensors that you have installed in your network and the artificial intelligence, intelligence to manage those, that, they, those data. And all that information comes to the single platform called Boom Brain that will manage all the, that, that information to give us results. Okay, next slide, please. So the big challenge here in the leak detection is the time. So we have the first time the awareness that we have to reduce the awareness time. So we will be able to act, act in real time and then to locate the leak in the network and then to do this repair. So if we reduce this time, we will automatically reduce the cost associated in, in those leak events. Next slide, please. So this is, uh, we have the, a problem when the DMA is big, okay? If the DMA is small DMA, you can go to there and you have a leak event and you can find it with the traditional ways. But the real problem comes when the uh, DMA is big. For example, in, with, as you see in the picture, let's see. Next slide, please. So here's how we do it. When we have big DMAs like DMA2, we use this hydraulic model in the first place that has to be calibrated, dynamic calibrated. And then we use that information uh, with the information of the sensors. As you can see in the, in the DMA2, we have five uh, flow, flow meters installed in this big area. So with this, uh, this, this mix with the hydraulic model, the artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning that we use in the first place to learn how, how the leaks will, how the sensor will, will, will affect about the leaks. So we are able to generate this, this virtual DMA and to find this uh, leaks in, with accuracy with, uh, from radio from 300 meters, for example. Next slide, please. 
So when you have a leak in the DMA, as, as you can see, the, all the technologies that are um, nowadays will, will tell you the leak detection in the DMA area. But we can do it more, more in a more efficient way. As you can see in the, in the next, in the virtual DMA approach, what we can do is we're going to go in the pipe level. So we're going to tell you exactly which pipe you have to, find, to, to, to go find the leaks. Next slide, please. So first place, we use the artificial intelligence and then the, the mix with the hydraulic simulation and the artificial intelligence. Just to show you, next slide, please. This is how we can see the, 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 the leak event, for example, in the platform. This is using flow meters, okay? We use flow meters for this. Next slide, please. So this is a case study, a real case study in Germany. So this is how we're gonna show you where you have to find the leak. Okay, first you have to go to the red and then to the other one. Next slide, please. So just to finish uh, here, for this competition, we think that we have a lot of knowledge in this field with the boom blame implementation that we have in more than 12 countries, but we don't want it to come here with uh, flow, flow meters and to do something that we already have been doing for some for some for, for a lot of years. So we want to do it with pressure sensors. So that's a reason for that. We have a, a very drastic reduction of costs when you comparing pressure sensors with flow meters. And we are re already doing uh, some projects ongoing in two countries that we are doing this with pressure sensors. What do we support for the client? The data preparation, because uh, we, what we need is the data, 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 and data, and then the hydraulic model calibration that we can do together with the client. And then this additional uh, sensors that has to be installed in the network in order to, to generate uh, to these leak events in the platform. Next slide, please. Thank you very much for your attention. I really, I really, and uh, hope this is very good for all the utilities in UK and around the world. And I want to tell you that we, we want to do this collaboration with some utilities in UK and we are open to, to hear something for them, from them. Thank you very much. That's super. Thank you very much, Jose. Um, again, just to ask you if you could expand a little bit on what you would exactly like from a partnership with a water company in England or Wales and how that would benefit the development of this solution. Perfect. Thank you. We are, we, since 2007, we are working with clients. All our innovation projects always have the clients on the centre of this we like, we love to work with clients and to build projects together. And this is a good opportunity for that. We have a, a platform that is, uh, has its recognition in different countries. Uh, and, and, and we want to do this, uh, as I told before, with uh, flow meters, uh, flow meters and uh, pressure sensors. So uh, in this, it, we think is a, Real, very uh, innovative project because as we have a lot of knowledge in the water sector and we have a lot of information and with different projects that we already uh, made, we can use all this information together with uh, this knowledge from the client to really build a very, very good platform that can help the planet uh, stay more sustainable. Super. I mean, you can't guess a better cause than that, can you, to help the planet be more sustainable. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, another really good presentation. So we will now move on to uh, Tell Lab uh, with Owen presenting. Are you there, Owen? I am indeed, I'm yeah. I've said your name correctly. Yeah, yeah. very good. Perfect. <laughs> I had to look it up first, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you can see my thank screen. You. You can, I'm on video and everything here is fine, yeah? Yeah, we can see and hear you perfectly, so Perfect. I will hand over to you. Thank Great, you. Thanks, thanks very much, Caroline. Uh, yeah, so th this talk introduces um, a new portable and deployable uh, nitrate and nitrite analyzer for uh, on-site and in-situ 
analysis of various water matrices, environmental and, and industrial waters called Aquamonitrix. Next slide. So uh, as I said, it's, it's, a, it's a, um, an analyzer designed for on-site or, or in situ analysis, um, and it's designed to, to deliver real-time pollution information, specifically for nitrite and nitrate. Um, it provides the customer with, with an opportunity to reduce fines relating to pollution incidents. Um, in addition, it's, it's, it's a very simple unit. It's, it's um, easy, easy to install, uh, easy, to, easy to deploy, and, and also servicing is, is, is very straightforward as well. So it's designed to be non, require non-skilled deployment and, and servicing. It's also, it also has a low cost of ownership. Um, again, it's, it's um, that was the, the, the kind of the, um, one of the design features, easy to, easy to mass manufacture, easy to manufacture, and, and also low cost of ownership was, was, uh, was a key uh, element of the design. Next slide. In terms of how the analyzer works, it, it's based on a, on a rapid ion chromatography technique in combination with um, a new 235 nanometer deep, deep UV LED, basically. And that allows for selective detection of, of nitride and nitrate. So we have uh, patented um, technology ar around, this, around this detector. Um, but basically it, it, it allows for rapid selective detection of nitride and nitrate. And, and in the image here, you can see typical chromatograms generated by the analyzer um, within, within three minutes. Um, and from these chromatograms, then concentration information is, is um, sent to the user. Uh, basically, so next slide. So here's an image of the of the commercial analyzer itself, which is commercially available from from this month. Um, and if you go to the next slide, here's just a couple of the a couple of the images of um, we've we, we've tested prototypes of the version um, prototypes of the analyzer in, in Spain, Finland, Ireland, uh, US, and and we had some systems in in New Zealand as well. So a whole range of different water matrices from um, waste um, various uh, waste waters, industrial waters, environmental fresh waters, and so on. So a whole wide variety of, of, of different um, water matrices. Next slide. So just to give you um, an idea of the analytical performance of the instrument. So we were finalists in a, a US competition, uh, an international competition, which was organized by the US EPA. And it was basically the challenge was to develop a, a, a cost effective analyzer for uh, real time monitoring of septic tank waters. And here you can see the results. So the concentrations, the nitrate concentrations generated by our analyzer versus accredited lab based in, um, instrumentation, uh, the results were generated by the, the, the US EPA. Um, so our results are in blue and the grab samples are in red. And so the left figure there is for nitrate and similarly the, the left figure is for nitrite. And as you can see in terms of accuracy, um, over, the, over the one month at an hourly frequency, the analyzer achieved 95% accuracy for nitrate and 104% um, for nitrite, uh, similar for precision, high levels of precision associated with the, with the analysis. Next slide. Here's just an example of the user interface for the um, for the IoT. So um, you can access the the, anal the analyzers remotely, and you can see the concentrations in, in in real time, depending on the sample sample frequency which you which you set. Next slide. So the the, the project which we're looking for um, collab collaboration and, and cl um, partners. Uh, in basically is, 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 is in the area of, of, of nitrite shunt. So um, through the use of um, an analyzer such as this, there's, there's potential to um, allow for effective uh, nitrite shunt and, and various, um, various studies carried out by um, Water New Zealand have demonstrated that by um, employing effective nitrite shunt, 25% uh, a 25% reduction in energy consumption within aeration systems is, is, is possible. And, and the objective is to minim minimize uh, nitrate production by, by stopping the, the nitrification process at nitrite. And that's where an in-situ real-time analyzer such as this um, could, add, could add value. So that's, that's one of the projects which, which we're looking for partners and, and um, interested in, in um, applying the analyzer uh, in, in this area. So that's next slide. 
So that's it. Thank, thanks very much for your attention. And um, if there's any questions or if you'd like more information on, on the analyzer or anything at all, feel free to get in contact. Super, thank you very much, Erin. Um, as with the others, um, I'd like to ask you the question around what you would like from a partnership with um, a water company or a NAV in England or Wales and how that would benefit the development of this solution moving forwards. Yes, so um, a lot of the areas, uh, our expertise is in the area of, of analytical instrumentation. Um, so we, we, we would really um, be grateful for, for the partnerships in, in the area of um, anyone with, with expertise in, in nitride shunt or aeration systems in general. Um, in, it, like, in, in addition, the analyzer has applications in a, in a wide range of, of, of different areas but that's uh, one of the one of the areas which we we think is um, it has it, it could provide um, a lot of value in terms of the the, the potential energy savings um, within those aeration systems but again uh, our area of expertise is, is in the instrumentation side and any partners that would have expertise that that would be beneficial uh, we'd be very interested in in um, working with them and, and collaborating going forward. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, right, we'll move on to our final presentation, last but certainly not least. Um, so I'd like to hand over the floor to Carol and Jane, who are both from Living Water Ecosystems. Hi there. Can you Hi, see Carol. me, Caroline? I Hi, can, you. I can see and hear you, yes. Thank yep. you. I will hand over to you um, and let you have the floor. Thank you. So I'm Carol Egener from Living Water Ecosystems and I'm here with Jane Shields, our director, to talk to you about our proposal to prevent and treat combined sewage overflows. So Living Water is a pioneering design company who apply ecological principles to solve water and waste problems. So the next slide, please. And so we're looking at three of the five um, in innovation themes that all of us have um, talked about. So that's responding to climate change and reducing emissions to zero, to restore and improve the ecological status of our water environment um, and protect current and future customers from extreme weather pollution, um, and understanding the long-term operational resilience and infrastructure risks to customers in the environment and finding solutions to mitigate those. So can I have the next slide, please? And so our approach, um, we look at three different things and it's, um, it's an integrated approach looking across the whole water chain um, and not just a little ice. We're not trying to sort of fix one little piece at a time, we're looking at the whole thing as a systems approach. So initially we want to reduce as much surface as we water, water as we can from entering the foul drain. Um, and we'll talk about more of that in detail. Um, but if we can reduce the, the surface water going in there, it reduces the load on the wastewater treatment plant. Um, which would reduce the, uh, increase its capacity and hopefully help the reduce drain block. Um, and another suggestion we have for reducing drain block is that new developments, any new developments, be that um, industrial, commercial, or um, residential, should incorporate an on-site ecological treatment system to attenuate and treat the surface water, and um, so that that's not going into the the wastewater treatment um, works, and um, and perhaps an exchange for um, capacity at the, the wastewater treatment works. And the last strand of our strategy is to actually protect the wastewater treatment plant from um, excessive volumes it's not designed to cope with. And we'll talk through that in more detail as well. Can I have the next slide, please? So how do we stop all this surface water from reaching the foul sewer? Um, and so we're looking at sort of two types of water. One is just like in excess flood water, um, you know, rainwater. And what, sort of, what any uh, living water do is we look to find where are the sources of this. We look at the, the water catchment and identify sources of excess water. And rather than them go to the drains, we want to capture them at source and turn what is, you know, a very precious resource into something useful and productive rather than it becoming a problem in the combined drains. And we would do that. We've got a, a number of ways that we would do that. The law will involve creating a natural ecosystem, and it could be through swales or ponds, redesigning straightened waterways and suds and rainwater gardens. And what we do is we look at 
the specific location and we, we, we target a specific solution for that. Um, and in terms of contaminated water, um, we need to tackle that as well. Um, the more we can reduce that going into the combined drain, the better for the wastewater treatment works. And we have a lot of experience in treating road and agricultural runoff, industrial effluents, landfill leachate, a whole variety of, um, of effluents. And if we treat these at source using ecological means, then that's less water going into the, the combined drains. Do I have the next slide? So our, our system's novel because it's a whole systems approach. Um, our systems are self-sustaining because um, we have a very diverse range of plants um, in our systems. Um, they're totally integrated into the local surroundings and um, that attracts the wildlife in there and also microbiology. And it's the microbiology that eats all the contaminants and also eats the detritus that comes from the plants. And so um, the systems are self-sustaining. There's zero waste and no sludge and they're very low maintenance. And, you know, whereas a lot of high tech solutions are dependent on electricity and um, our solutions aren't. So they're carbon negative and they're also completely robust in the event of a power outage. Can we have the next slide? So the benefits are you eliminate your CSOs because you've reduced the water going into your treatment package and you've captured any excess and put it through the treatment plant. So you've eliminated CSOs, you've improved the quality of the water, reduced your emissions, reduced your financial penalties and customer complaints and your liability because you're not having um, pollution going out into the environment. Your costs are significantly lower because our systems are carbon negative. You've increased biodiversity and where you put in the ecological treatment systems, these are natural, beautiful places and they're amenities for the public, which can only improve the reputation of the water companies that are putting them in. Can the next slide? We do need to wrap up if possible, yeah. please. <laughs> so product readiness, we've demonstrated that we've done this before, we've got 32 years of experience um, and now we want to work at a bigger scale. So the next slide is hopefully the last one. Yeah, so what are we looking for? Living Water are passionate about tackling um, pollution and making the world a cleaner place. And we want to work with a water company who's also passionate and are committed to tackling CSOs. And we want to work with them together to develop an integrated strategy across their entire region to manage water catchment and CSOs. And for this particular project, a demonstration is to actually apply all of this to at least one of their sites, wherever they've got the worst case of CSOs, um, and actually demonstrate that this technology works. And the last slide. So thank you very much for your patience and for inviting us here to talk and please come back to us with any questions. That was great. Thank you, Carol. Um, I think you've actually answered the question, but just to make sure that I've noted down correctly, in terms of what you would like from a, a water company or a NAV in England or Wales from that partnership, I noted down that you would like the opportunity to create that integrated strategy and to conduct a demonstration in, in really a worst case scenario to demonstrate that this solution does work effectively. Um, have That's I right. captured that correctly? I've not Perfectly, missed anything yes. that you would like to get across. <laughs> Super. That's it. Thank you. No problem at all. Thank you very much, Carol. So next up is Simon from Cobus. Over to you. Thank you very much, Simon. The floor is yours. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Simon MacDonald, um, and I'm going to be talking to you about the Cobus pipe puller um, in the context of the, uh, the innovation agenda. Um, and very briefly, I'd, next, I'd first of all like to talk about um, how it actually works. Essentially, it's a trenchless pipe pulling technique. If you look at the first picture there, you can see uh, we've two pits either side of the road, so there's no need for any road closure or whatever. Um, and we insert our pulling pipe through uh, the old, pulling cable on through the old pipe, um, and then attach it to the spool at the other end. Um, we assemble the pool in the excavation pit on the other side and simply pull it. It pulls the old pipe safely out of the ground and pulls the new one through. Simple as that, one swift action, and the actual action of the pipe pulling is probably only five or ten minutes. It'll pull all pipe types and it will pull anything up to 25 metres. Thank you. Next. In terms of its impact um, against the, uh, the, the well-known stated goals of, of off, off watt, you can see that it's got some significant benefits. First of all, in terms of cost per replacement, 
Uh, typically, it can be 70% less than open cut um, uh, trenching. Um, in terms of customer disruption, you've already seen it, it negates the need for road closures, etc. But it also uh, minimizes any um, um, downtime for the customer. <clears throat> in terms of on-site emissions, clearly the lack of uh, machinery required versus open cut means there's significantly less on-site emission. I'd also add on the environmental side, <clears throat> we've probably removed many, many millions of kilos from the ground of, of lead, which is also obviously great for the environment. Safety issues and strikes, far less likely in the case of uh, trenchless pipe pulling versus, let's say, moling. Of course, we significantly reduced underground congestion because we're actually removing the old pipe. Leakage rates clearly are significantly reduced, new pipe in the ground. And then, of course, the whole wider issue of public disruption, road closures, etc., um, are, are extremely well taken care of when it comes to, to COVAS. Next, please. So what is the current status and way forward? Well, first of all, uh, our machines are now made in the UK and they're stocked in the UK. So we have inventory, so they're easy to call off. Um, we're ready to deploy and demo and, or trial for any uh, water company partners. Um, and I think we've developed um, a great way of partnering with water companies to foster internal adoption, which we see as one of the key issues in terms of getting take up of innovation in the industry. Um, our objective, I think, is pretty simple. If you are conducting a pipe replacement program, then COBA should at the least be in the toolkit, if not perhaps the go-to tool in the toolkit. So that's our clear objective. And don't just take it from me. In the next chart, you'll see that um, we, we have significant customers. Next, please, Natasha. Um, you'll see that we have significant partners who have already using the, the equipment and to great effect. Um, if you, first of all, taking Senexon, which is a very large player in, uh, in Canada, in fact, and their, their line I'd like to draw your attention to is, it's clear that this technology is a game changer in our industry. So, the, and they're using five every single day um, in, uh, in North America. Next, please. And you'll also see that here in the UK, um, we have a, a great partner in, in Wessex, um, and Eddie Rant, who many of you may know, um, speaks very highly of the pipe puller in the sense of its speed and the fact that it is much less disruptive than other, other methods. So that's it. Thank you. Next, please. Um, that's it. Um, that is the Cobus pipe puller. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to take them. Perfect. Thank you very much, Simon. Another great presentation and perfectly kept to time. So thank you very much. Um, as with the others, we'd just like to ask you a couple of follow up clarification questions. Um, and they are, what would you like from a partnership with a water company or a NAV? And how would this partnership benefit the solution development moving forwards? I think um, the key thing that we like to see with a partnership is to is to work <clears throat> very closely hand in glove with that water company partner to to instill the, uh, the 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 take up of the innovation within the organization um, because it won't work every single time there's no doubt about that but if we have the right partnership and the right um, uh, working working relationship with that with that uh, water company, we can make sure that it is adopted right the way through to the front line, which obviously is is absolutely fundamental, and it is where we've got to with major water companies like Wessex. That's great. Thank you very much, Simon. Great. Well, that brings us to the end of the brokerage event today.